Hello, I am Tom Bailey, and in today's Speaker Stories episode, we'll be getting to know Michelle Shinoeth, who is a best-selling and multi-award winning author, as well as being a sought-after speaker and the founder of your Book Done Right Masterclass and Elite Coaching. So Michelle, hello, and a very warm welcome to today's episode. Hello, Tom. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for being here. And just out of interest, um, I'm, I'm here in the UK. Whereabouts in the world are you? I'm in the United States in a state called Maryland in a little town called Northeast, which is right over the Delaware, Maryland line. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Never been, but hopefully one day I can I can head over that way. And um, so I just want to just share a little bit more about you before we do get started. So Michelle is a former news reporter and marketing director, and her books include The Faithful One, The Peacemaker, the, the Runaway Prophet, The Jealous Son, and her newest release, which is The Wise Man. So quite an incredible journey from the sounds of things, Michelle. And, and given the topic of this podcast, I'd love to find out how important public speaking has been for you along your journey. It's been super important. I tell my writing students and clients who I coach these days, that public speaking is the number one marketing tool. I actually teach a workshop mm -hmm. called Speakers Sell More Books at Writers Conference. Amazing. And it's so true. It took many years for me to discover that, but once I did, I it took off. So I originally, I've always wanted to be an author since I was 10 years old mm -hmm. and life happened. I went to college, graduated, got married, got a job. Uh, I was a news reporter coming out of college, so I always practiced my writing and interviewing skills. Yeah. Then I went into marketing, and I owned my own ad agency for 20 years and was a marketing director for a corporate firm. But along the way, that author bug bit me again, and mm -hmm. I wrote my first novel, which started to take off. And I started to speak to small groups, book club, yeah. women's groups, mm -hmm. church groups at the time, who asked me to talk about my book. And I also was attending writers conferences to get better at my craft, to find out how to get published, to find a literary agent, those types of things. And I noticed that the speakers that presented workshops and keynotes sold more books. Yeah. And I said, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So, but I wasn't a very good public speaker. I knew I could get better. And I also had that fear of public speaking. So I went into Toastmasters International uh, in my local area, joined a club, started practicing, entered contests. I'm always like this jumping feet first. So yeah. I immediately went the contest route and that helped me push, you know, my boundaries and, and become better. And I started to speak at uh, small writers conferences, bigger writers conferences, Christian conferences, big women's conferences. And so that grew and I became a keynote speaker. And I realized not only did it help me sell more books, but it opened up doors uh, to become a writing instructor at my local college, to become a book coach, helping writers uh, become authors themselves. And I was able to quit my day job in marketing and become a full-time book coach and author and speaker. So yeah, it, it, it's really interesting actually, because then um, I think a lot of speakers tell me that if they've got a book, they get more speaking gigs. And then, you know, a lot of authors tell me that if they speak, they get more book sales. So they kind of do really work hand in hand. Um, so any speakers listening, write a book and any authors listening, learn to speak, I think is, is the kind of key message there. Um, a question for me on the back of that is, you know, from, from noticing that, I think I need to speak, but I'm not very good at it. To I'm now a keynote speaker. How how long was that journey? I've been in Toastmasters since 2011, so that's been 11 years. 11 years, yeah. And I first got the notion that maybe this public speaking thing might help me as an author. I my first book was originally published in 2009, and since then, I have five novels. The fifth one just came out this year. And so that speaker, author, speaker, book coach mm -hmm. career has grown little by little into being full-time for me today. And I divide my time between 
you know, writing books, helping others get their books written, published, and marketed, and speaking. So it all, it does all tie hand in hand. We know public speakers, if they have a book to sell at the back of the room, it positions them as an, an expert or uh, in their field, if they're nonfiction or as a, you know, great writer. And the speaking positions the author as an expert mm. author. So yep. they really do work hand in hand. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. And let's go back to, I guess, your first presentation. So you, you've been asked by your local church group or your local um, women's network, like you said, to stand up and speak. How did that go? How, how does that fit? Did you feel nervous? Like, how was that first speaking opportunity for you? Oh, wow. You took me back. And <laughs> I was very nervous, extremely yeah. nervous. Mm. In fact, somebody said I counted about 56 ums. I think they were exaggerating a little bit, ahs and ums. Yeah. And I learned how to take a deep breath, to be myself authentic, but to pause, how to make eye contact, how to do purposeful movement, how to incorporate all of those speaking basics. But along the way, I also realized it's about telling a story too. Mm, And that's what my book coaching business is all about, how I help a lot of actually nonfiction authors make their books better. People relate to people, right? Not concepts or topics. And so I encourage all my writers to really use description and dialogue and story to make elevate their books. And it's the same with speaking as well stories have to be incorporated because that's how people relate i love that yeah so i think you mentioned that start um um you said a lot of um at, at the beginning of, of your you know speaking career and we do that because we want we feel like we should fill the what this the empty space you know they're called filler words for a reason um but like you said as soon as you realize that you could just pause instead and sometimes pausing actually helps the audience follow along because they don't feel like it's being rushed through as well they get a a second to reflect on what you've just said so that's a really good first skill but then like you said then is you then learn hand gestures then you learn eye contact then it's storytelling then it's use of humor there's so many different things that you'll learn along that journey but I think the the key for me is don't feel like you have to learn it all straight away you know you you can learn bits by bits can't you as as a speaker yes and that's a good point you learn by doing yes There's the world champion of public speaking, Darren LaCroix. I heard him speak once and he said that, uh, he says, stage time, stage time, stage time. So the more you speak, the better you get. And it's all about practice, makes perfect. That is true with everything and especially speaking. So the more you speak, the better you get. And so that's how I really developed as a speaker in just putting myself out there and taking Mm. advantage of every opportunity I could and learning all of those basics and then building on those. But you're right. You can't hit the stage and expect to be a good speaker. That's not going to happen. Just like you can't write a book for the first time and and publish it and hope it's going to be great. A lot of people think either one can happen. and, And that's why we have folks like us out there to, uh, to help others. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's one of the big benefits of this this podcast and finding about the stories of speakers is, you know, those people starting out in your journey, don't compare yourself to keynote speakers because chances are they've been doing this for 11 years and it's okay that you're not quite there yet. And so, yeah, it's a really good story that you shared with us there as well. Um, so we've talked about the beginning of your journey, feeling nervous, counting 56 arms in, in your presentations. Um, what, what about this end of of your journey then so you you now call yourself a sought after speaker which you are a keynote speaker what would you say are the the key things that you've learned now that you'd wished you'd known back then one of the things that really made a difference in my growing as an author and speaker is connecting with the audience. So yes. originally, I guess I thought it was about me and everybody's looking at me and, and hearing my words and what do I 
have to say, but after I spoke a few times and realized it's not about me, that first of all helps you overcome your nervousness. But second, I, for example, I was speaking about my first book, The Faithful One, uh, which is a modern day reimagining of the book of Job. And I was in a really dark place. I had my ad agency. I was losing my marriage, my business through a recession. Uh, my kids were becoming teenagers. I felt like I was losing them. I was losing my health at the time. It was, mm-hmm. I was in a really dark place. And um, I heard a still small voice call me to write what became this modern retelling of the book of Job. And I fought it for a while. It took me eight years to publish, but I did come through and God brought me through all of that. And I'd like to look back and, and say now, and uh, today I'm remarried, uh, living my dream of being an author, speaker, book yeah. coach. Uh, I have a great, we have a blended family of five adult kids and uh, in good health and living my dream. So Amazing. Uh, in writing that though, and then in speaking about that, uh, people, I remember a woman coming up to me and grabbing my hand and saying, you know, after reading that book, I feel like I have hope and faith again, and I am going to go back to church. And I was like, wow. And then my second book, The Peacemaker, is based on David and Abigail. The, uh, Abigail becomes David's second wife. Before, before she does, she's married to a not-so-nice narcissistic, uh, in my book, abusive alcoholic. And uh, she struggles with that, and she eventually uh, becomes uh, makes peace between the two before the campaigns get really ugly. And she and she has to risk her life and take a lot of courage to do that. And a friend of mine recommended I write that one because I was identifying with the car- uh, with Abigail in the Bible uh, going through this divorce. And anyway, after I spoke to a small group, a woman came up to me, also took my hand and said, can I call you? I feel like I'm married to the same guy you used to be married to mm-hmm. and can yeah. we talk. And, and it was then that I realized it wasn't about being rich and famous. It wasn't about speaking to the millions. It was about making a difference in a few folks' lives. And as I realized that, I started to, uh, little by little, realize it's about the audience yeah. and the message that you have yeah. to say to them and, and what they need to hear, what yeah. they crave to hear. Mm. And so I started to tailor my messages again around that signature story of mine around the, the what they need, wanted to hear. And if you meet the needs of, let's just say, conference directors that have an audience that needs to hear your message, that's when you connect and it's not about you. Uh, yeah. So that was like, yeah. if I had known that back then, yeah. I may be speaking to the millions instead of the hundreds or... Yeah. So, yeah. but that's okay. I, yeah. I'm probably right where I need to be. Yeah, it's it, it's a huge point. Um, and I think it's important to think about it as well because whether you're writing a book or whether you're standing on stage speaking, it, it's a vehicle to impact people's lives. Um, and it's that ripple effect, isn't it? If one person in that audience, if you change their life, think about the impact they can have in, in, in resharing that message. So the by by thinking this, it almost removes the the fear of public speaking is so insignificant i might feel a bit embarrassed versus i could impact hundreds of thousands of people's lives your insecurities become insignificant compared to what impact you could have so it's almost like you've just got to push through them you've got to you've got to push yourself past that because if you don't you're not going to be helping all these people that you could be helping through speaking or or through writing your book right you have to they identify just like they do in books, same as speaking, and good writers usually make good speakers and vice versa eventually, because we share from our heart and our pain, mm-hmm. and that's how people connect with us. They want to be able to, re- they can relate to sometimes your your flaws, your weaknesses, your vulnerability, your pain, your story, and yeah. Yes, I, I. it took me a while to learn that lesson, yeah. and I often need to remind myself that you know, it's, it's, it's about the people reading the book. It's about the readers and it's about mm-hmm. the audience. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And so do you want to just quickly talk about the business side of speaking as well. So we've talked about the transition from af- afraid of speaking to figuring out how to do speaking, but at the top end, it's figuring out how do I go from speaking to getting paid 
from doing speaking like how do i generate revenue so and you know you could sell more books you could get paid to be a keynote speaker so what what's your kind of take on that transition from speaking to, to practice versus i'm actually going to make a business out of this that's a great question so i did start out speaking for free at these small groups and occasionally i still do uh, but i built up to getting paid as i spoke to these writers conferences so they usually pay an honorarium uh some more than others mm -hmm. and but then i started speaking to bigger groups i spoke to um the gospel rescue mission in delaware and um they paid me to speak and then i spoke to a big women's conference they also paid me to speak you usually get more as a keynote and yeah. i have noted twice and you know they pay your expenses and and you know um uh, uh, you can make thousands of dollars as speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's all your, you know, it's it's the field you speak within. Uh, writers' conferences don't pay a whole lot, but they do. So here's another point: they do off provide a pipeline for my book coaching business. Yes. So one feeds the other. So I will speak often for you know a few hundred dollars at writers' conferences. However the workshops I present, people want to know more. They want to yeah. take my classes. So I have a, an eight week, your book done right. Uh, your book done right.com. You can find more information there, but it's an eight week course where I uh, it's online and I, it's a master class on how to write, publish and uh, market your book and personal coaching and editing services in between so that you actually get your book done. Love it. Okay. Yeah. And that course developed from my speaking, actually. I was teaching at the local college and COVID hit. Mm, and yes. my college class went online to local people that were taking it because it had to. And that developed, people started to find me and, and here we are connecting worldwide, right? Incredible. And, and I've had people in my classes from all over the world. And so one thing led to another, God opened doors for me that I didn't even yeah. see coming. Yeah. Uh, so one thing led to another, and that's how it, it built up. So there are various things that ways you can get paid through coaching, through programs, through classes you offer, and the speaking can lead to those other things as well. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And yeah, just just to quickly touch on the the global pandemic. We we thought it was going to wipe out all the speakers, and you know they'd, they'd have no incomes and they'd have to sell their houses. But actually, what happened was big transitions for a lot of speakers to virtual delivery, to creating online courses, to launching new businesses. So it's been actually um, quite a transformation for a lot of speakers in a good way, I think. For me, mm. definitely, and for us. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, exactly. Here we are. Um, speaking from across the the pond, as, Whoa, as they yes. say. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Across the ocean. Across the ocean. Um, fantastic. So, um, last last question for me. By the way, this has been amazing. I've just got so much value out of this personally, and I know my listeners have as well. Um, you've mentioned one website, but what's the best place for people to connect with you online? What What's that um website or or social platform? What How can people connect with you? So I can be reached at michellechenoweth.com. It's Michelle with one L, C-H-Y-N-O-W-E-T-H.com. That has all of my, uh, has information about my books. So I do have a fifth book. Can I do a quick yeah, plug? Of it's course. The Wise Man, and it's Amazing. a contemporary novel based on Solomon. So I have five novels. They're each individual. They each reimagine a story in the Bible, but in a totally modern day, edgy, nice. action-packed way. So yeah. There's suspense with a little romance. One's a thriller, one's a murder mystery based on Cain and Abel. And then this one is a drama about a Supreme Court justice who decides a very uh, ripped from the headlines case uh, that might overturn Roe v. Wade. So it had Incredible. good timing. They can find my books about me, about my speaking, and uh, get samples of that, all of that, and my coaching services as well on that website and i'm on all social media so connect with me there as well and my books are on amazon and wherever books are sold fantastic thank you so much what i'll do as well is i'll post all of the links to all of those things in the show notes so people can just click on them they can find out more about you and, and buy your books as well and take my course if you want to write a and, book Tom, are you writing a book? 
<laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna join your eight week course. I'm gonna write a book. Why not? Oh, awesome! <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much again for your time today. I really appreciate it and for coming along and sharing your story with our audience. Thank you.